Jonathan Major's ex-girlfriend Grace Jabari flees the courtroom after a video was played of her and him at the time of the alleged assault. Grace Jabari, as they put it, was overcome with emotion multiple times during her testimony after the alleged assault video played in the courtroom. From what it seems like, surveillance video was being played of Jonathan thrusting Jabari into the vehicle. This video was being shown by Jonathan Major's side and the reason why they were showing this, even though it doesn't really give the best impression of him, it was to undermine her testimony that her head slammed into the vehicle's door frame when she was thrown back into the car. They're not denying the fact that he threw her into the car, they're saying that he threw her into the car but she only landed on the seat. Further, going with the testimony that we already knew that they were going to go with, which was she did the damage to herself when she got back into the apartment, displaying that at no point did he lay a hand on her in the sense that he didn't strike her on the head and that at no point was he the reason that her fingers were damaged. What she was claiming was that Majors was the reason that she was struck in the head and that he fractured her middle finger after she had confronted him about receiving text messages from another woman. The prosecutors, on the other hand, are claiming that while she was trying to exit the vehicle, he quote unquote threw her back into the car like a football. The defense countered this claim by playing the surveillance video, and even Jabari's on record as saying there were multiple pushes, coupled with multiple injuries, even dating back to earlier in their relationship, saying that he has a violent temper and this was not a new experience for her. This is a pattern of Jonathan. She then fled the courtroom in tears when she was forced to watch the police body camera footage of her initial conversation with the police. What I find interesting is it says that Jonathan was looking down while she was crying. I can't make the conclusion if this is remorse. I can't make the conclusion if this is just I don't want to look at her. But she eventually returned back to the court and then later apologized for her outburst as she puts it. She even begged the court to not re-watch the footage. I think courts can appeal to that and be sympathetic, but if it's a piece of evidence, they can't just not show it, especially if it's a crucial piece of evidence. The defense went on to play the surveillance footage from the nightclub, the one we've all seen by now, where she could be seen holding her phone, taking a shot, hanging out with friends, on the exact same night of the alleged attack. This is an important piece of evidence because, as she puts it, she was in excruciating pain. She made the claim that after that night, after the attack, she didn't want to be alone, so she ventured off to Lucy's nightclub. She buys a bottle of champagne and a round of shots for new friends that she made that night. This surveillance video in and of itself is troubling, only because the initial questions that would come out of the defense would be, how could you then lift a champagne bottle, handle your phone in such a matter, take shots, and none of the new friends around you are concerned enough to even wrap your finger, while all the while it was fractured. Now, after her testimony, the driver that was in the vehicle, the witness to all of this, he finally took the stand. His testimony above everyone else's is going to be crucial. It's more crucial than Jonathan's, it's more crucial than Grace. Why? Because aside from everyone else that would have been outside that might have been seeing the two of them interacting, he was inside of the vehicle. So his is the one witness that witnessed everything that happened. Now listen to this. Inside of the black Cadillac that transported Jonathan Majors and Grace Jabari on March 25th, this driver stated as saying he thought that the dancer had hit the actor in the alleged altercation. The driver recalls that Grace was demanding to see Jonathan's phone, stating that she became very angry. He said Jonathan wanted to dismiss Grace that night, so he opened the door. He got out of the car and she followed and he was saying, leave me alone, I have to go. The driver says he was not doing anything, she was doing it. The driver said that she was fighting him and that from his impression, the girl had hit the boy as he puts it. Now, all of this evidence is important to take into consideration. Even the text messages that aired from last week relating to an incident that was in September 2022, which by the sounds of it, would almost suggest that Jonathan had done something like this in the past, even alluding to the fact that he told her to not report it to the hospital. Now, after Grace Jabari took the stand, and the driver took the stand. A doctor who treated Grace Jabari took the stand as well. So the doctor who treated her after the alleged incident, he says that yes, her finger was fractured. And yes, she did have a cut behind the ear. So the cut behind the ear, they closed with skin glue. And so they asked him, how could she have sustained such an injury? And his response was being hit in the ear or being hit with a sharp object. The defense, Priya Chaudhary, they went on to question the doctor about Grace Jabari's finger and how she broke it. And he said that when he asked her that exact same question, her response was that she did not know how she sustained those injuries at the time. 
And she also didn't mention that she was struck in the back of the head when she went to the hospital. When they examined her, he mentioned as well that there was no evidence of cauliflower ear. For those of you that don't know what cauliflower ear is, it's a condition that happens when the outside of the ear is hit and develops a blood clot or a buildup of some kind of fluid in the ear. Now, while the doctor was on the stand, they did get a little bit personal as well. So, this same guy also said that she's at risk for alcohol abuse and disorder. Grace Jabari previously said that she had three to four alcoholic drinks a night and that she had more than six drinks in one sitting monthly. Now, after all of that, the doctor was then dismissed and taken off the stand. So that's all we got. This case is looking to get fiery as all of this evidence comes out piece by piece by piece. I thought I knew the full story and I thought I had a clear window of what was happening. I don't know who to believe at this point. I have to be completely honest with y'all. Let me just address Marvel first. I think Marvel might just drop Jonathan Majors. And if I had to give you an answer as to why, those text messages from last year are pretty damning. It's not a good look when, to paraphrase, you're telling the hospital, don't tell them what happened. I'm not saying he did it because I wasn't there. I'm just saying those text messages look like he did it. But at the current moment, he's not on trial for anything that happened last year. We're talking about this year. And really, all they could do is just use it as a historical measure to show that this is a real pattern of his. And so if you're Disney, just based on the text messages from last year, as to be safe, they'd probably end up dropping them. But as for all of this evidence as to what happened inside the car and outside of the car, well, you heard the driver's testimony that at no point did he ever see him put his hands on her. Now, whether it only played out like that because he was in public, or whether it played out like that just because it's not a pattern of his, is going to be up to the courts to decide. I'll keep on bringing you guys more information as the evidence comes out, because I do want to stay updated with this trial. So that's all I got for now, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Is all of this damning evidence for him or for her? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, and I'll see you guys again for the next one. Be easy, y'all.